Afternoon, guys. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School. Back in another in our series in the shadow of Nesmic. And one of the things that Nesmic talked about quite extensively was ultralight shelter systems. And this shelter that I'm in now is set up in what's called a plow point or a diamond configuration. It's just a square seven by seven tarp that I've had for a really long time. I like to use it in this configuration and several others. The advantage to a square tarp is that you can put it up in several different configurations depending on how you want to camp that night and depending on the weather conditions. But the plow point is a very convenient shelter system. You can tie it up from one central point to a tree or use a bipod configuration like we have here and then close it in basically on three sides in a plow point style fashion and lower the pitch or raise the pitch depending on the weather and depending on how much breeze you want coming through the shelter. But you have plenty of room in the back of the shelter depending on the size of it to get in there and lay down and have room for your equipment as well. And you can put a small fire out in the front if you want to for cooking and things like that. A shelter like this is very ultra light in weight because a sill nylon tarp doesn't weigh much. You could get even lighter than this by going with some type of a Dyneema fiber, some kind of a Cuban fiber, but it would be much more expensive. Now there are other shelters that I wanna show you a sample of today that are very similar in configuration to this plow point shelter from Finland called the Lau. And it's basically a half of a Lavu shelter that was developed in Finland to use in the forest of Finland. And it has a couple of advantages over this type setup, but it also has disadvantages. The disadvantages are it's made to only set up in one configuration really, whereas the square tarp can be used in lots of configurations. But the way the Lau is built, and the one that I'm going to use is from a company called Wildward in Finland, for this demonstration and the way it's built and the way it's made it's very conducive to a colder weather environment and it's very conducive to giving you almost better coverage in the long run than a high peak diamond or ply point shelter like this one would have so let's look at both of these shelters today now you can see that i have a full-size thermo rest mattress in here right now on the ground for a ground pad and so there's plenty of room inside here for me to sleep and not get wet in the rain. I can also sleep at an angle this direction if I wanted to. The disadvantage to a shelter like this for a, just a plain square tarp is that if I don't have this stick in the middle to raise the peak, I dramatically reduce the amount of headroom that I have. So by sticking just a stick up here and propping it up, I give myself a tremendous amount of headroom. With a tarp that's designed a little bit better than this one, that has a center tie out, a larger tarp like an eight by eight for instance, you can tie that out from the top on the outside or from the back and give you that headroom automatically and give you that nice diamond plow point look. With just a square tarp with no center tie out, you're stuck with putting a stick inside or dropping it down and reducing the amount of headroom you have. Either way, it's not really that big of a deal. I did this type of setup with a plow point on when I was trucking back in the 90s all the time with an oil skin tarp and it worked out just fine. But this Lau shelter is even better for a configuration like this and I'm gonna show you why. Now the way I set this type of shelter up makes it very, very stable in nature. What I do is I build my bipod and I lash it. I bring the tarp through the V and put a toggle through my tie out loop and then I use one rope on each side of the V crossing each other here out to the ground and that gives it very rigid stability even in high wind or bad weather. So let's talk about this really quick. Now the next thing I generally do here that I'm going to show you real quick is when I set this shelter up I use a very simple system. I use one of my utility ropes and I did a video on that utility rope and I carry a few of these with me and this is just about a seven foot rope and it has a stop knot in one end and a bow line in the other and I hank that cordage and I leave three or four of them in my bag all the time and this is what I use for utility type cordages or extra ridge lines things like that extra guy lines that I need all those types of things so I take that loop and I throw it right over the top just like this and now I have a guy line and then I pull it out wherever I want to stake it out at and I just put a simple marline spike in the line, put my stake in there and tighten it down and drive it into the ground. 
and that gives me a very, very stable shelter. So again, now that I've got both of these unstaked, now my bipod is loose. I can hank up these cords, which I'll do in a minute. And the only thing that's holding this tarp to this bipod is a simple toggle. That's ran right through the loop, just like that, and brought in between here. And then your cross ropes pulling out on this are what tighten your shelter up. And then you can adjust the peak up or down any way you want to by adjusting this bipod. So the advantage of something like this is if the weather starts to turn foul, we can drop this thing down and lower our pitch. At the same time, we're lengthening that space underneath of covered protection. You'd think a seven by seven tarp, most people would say, well, that's not near big enough for me. I need an eight by eight, I need a nine by eight, I need a 10 by 10. Once you put this thing on the diagonal and you drop the peak down, you now have about 10 to 10 and a half feet of space underneath this on the diagonal. So you've got plenty of coverage in there in foul weather. And then you can just, just like we did before, you can stake this out and tighten everything up, but you have a lower pitch to protect yourself from wind and rain. Okay, so the other big advantage to this, like you said, is you have an ultra light shelter system, and that's what Nesmic was all about, how light he could get his stuff and still have the protection and the coverage that he needed to be at the comfort level that he desired. And you can easily do that with something like a seven by seven. That's not going to break the bank as far as weight goes. And you can buy a seven by seven tarp fairly inexpensively in a sill nylon. What I've got here is I put this in a pretty heavy duty bag. I've got this in probably a 350 denier bag. And that's part of my mentality going forward with this. Looking at this Nesbic mentality is that if you're going to go with ultralight gear or something that doesn't have the durability, say, of canvas or oil cloth, then you better have it in something that's bomb proof, that you're not going to tear up, that's going to protect that lighter weight material inside until you get it to where you need to use it. And then you're going to be okay. But something like this, without the stakes in here, assuming I'm going to use titanium or wooden stakes, probably weighs well under two pounds. Let's weigh it and find out. All right, so you're looking at 1.4, 1.5 pounds-ish for this system. That's really not much weight at all or shelter, especially something as versatile as a tarp that's square and that can be set up in so many different configurations. Now, let's look at the Lau. Okay, so here is our Lau shelter, which is a half a Lavu, as we spoke before pretty much. And you can see that the package size is pretty much the same. The weight, however, is a little different. You're talking about 1.9 here versus 1.5 here, which are only four ounces. So four ounces of difference here. And what you're gonna see is that this has a lot more coverage and it has some distinct advantages if you like that plow point type configuration. Let's get this thing set up. Now, I don't know if you can see from looking at this straight on, but you have three times the amount of room under this Lau that you had under that 7x7 seven seven tarp. And you have quite a bit more coverage circumference-wise because instead of being a diamond, it's more of a half circle. I'm going to put a mat under there to show you 
kind of the difference by laying straight across this thing at how much room there is in there with no suspension from the backside whatsoever and only pulling it out from the front. Okay, so you have five ounces more weight, but now you have something you can lay completely sideways in if you wanted to put a long fire out in front of this shelter. And because it has a reflective material on the inside of this shelter, it actually will give you convective heat transfer from inside here. So it becomes a very warm, colder weather shelter that gives you more coverage from both sides with only one opening on the front. And again, you can drop the pitch on this just like you could on the plow point to protect you better from the weather. But this automatically gives you that circular wrap around and it gives you a lot more coverage for the weight because you're talking four ounces difference for quite a bit larger space that's covered by this tarp. So this Lau is a very, very good option. You can buy something like this for about the same price as a seven by seven or an eight by eight tarp. So as you can see, there's plenty of headroom in here if I want to sit up inside the shelter. There's plenty of length in here if I want to lay down inside the shelter. And there's plenty of room in the back of this shelter to store gear and things like that as well to keep it out of the weather that you may not have the advantage of with a smaller 7x7 type tarp set up in a diamond configuration. So both of them have advantages and disadvantages. But I wanted to show you this Lao type shelter today because it's not something that you see a lot on YouTube. There's probably videos about this particular shelter, I'm sure, by Wildward of Finland. But I don't think they've been set up in the same context of ultralight camping, the Nesmic mentality, and what this tarp is like versus just a regular diamond configuration in a square tarp. So I wanted to bring you that today. Guys, I thank you for watching this video. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.